evening and welcome to the BBC News at six. Police and social workers investigating child sex exploitation in Greater Manchester 15 years ago knew that children were suffering the most profound abuse but did not protect them. That's the finding of a report into historical child sex abuse. It says the authorities knew girls in care were being abused by dozens of men, mainly from what it calls Asian backgrounds, but did not protect them, partly because of concerns about race relations. Police launched Operation Augusta in 2004 after the death of a 15-year-old girl from Rochdale, but the report said the investigation was wound up too soon. Our North of England correspondent Judith Moritz reports. Victoria Agolia lived a short and horrific life, beaten, raped and injected with heroin. Living in care, the authorities knew what was happening to her. I found them and found them and found them. Her grandmother, Joan, tried to get help, but nothing was done, and Victoria died aged 15. They just didn't care. And all these men were doing all this to her, and they knew, they all knew about it, and they let them take her off. They even went into the homes, and they knew what was happening, and I told them what was happening, and they let them come in and just take her out. Victoria lived in Rochdale. After she died, the police opened an investigation into child sexual exploitation in the area. The investigation, called Operation Augusta, found that such abuse was happening here on a huge scale. Detectives suspected that as many as 97 men were grooming children as young as 12. But in 2005, before it could complete its work, that investigation was abruptly shut down. In 2017, this BBC documentary about abuse in Rochdale was broadcast. As a result, a new review was ordered into the scale of the crime. Today, it found that Operation Augusta was shut down prematurely. Our report has established that most of the children we considered were failed by Greater Manchester Police and Manchester City Council. The authorities knew that many were being subjected to the most profound abuse and exploitation, but did not protect them. This is a depressingly familiar picture seen in many other towns and cities across the country. The police have now announced that they've begun a fresh investigation into non-recent child sexual exploitation in Rochdale. I want to say that I'm personally disgusted that these children were not cared for and the awful abuse they suffered. I'm committed to doing all that we can to ensure that they receive the justice today that they were denied 15 years ago. Maggie Oliver is a former detective who worked on the first investigation and became a whistleblower when the case was dropped. She now feels vindicated but warns against complacency. They will still say now that well, lessons have been learned. Things are much different now 15 years on. Well, I will tell them that there are many things that are not any different. And that is because I know that to be the case. Are you saying that you're being still being inundated with complaints of abuse now? Massively. Current, current abuse. Current abuse. Current abuse every day. Four of the social workers involved have been referred to their professional standards body and there are calls for a new inquest for Victoria Agolia. Her family say that even after today's report, they still don't have closure. Judith Moritz, BBC News, Rochdale. Our home editor, Mark Easton, is here. This is called historical abuse, but it is still relatively recent. It does seem that lessons haven't been learned. This isn't ancient history. These failures happened in 2004 and 2005. Britain had just been through a period of soul-searching about protecting children from abuse. There'd been a new Children's Act. The authorities were promising that they'd learn the lessons about putting children first. But as we heard in that report, lessons hadn't been learned. The children were in our care. Children, those in authority, were labelling as prostitutes and promiscuous. Children who, it's, who said, had chosen to be exploited. And the perpetrators, of course, all came from one ethnic minority, uh, which the authorities recognised had itself been a victim of prejudice and racism. We'd like to paint society as neatly divided between the law-abiding and the criminal, the, uh, the righteous and the wicked, victims and villains. And when things are not clear, they can become less of a priority. That's what happened, I think, because we forgot the most important thing, however difficult and demanding they may be. The welfare of children must come first. Mark Easton, thank you.